serves only to open its airways to responsible divergent point of view. The opinions expressed on this program do not reflect those of WAIF, Board of Trustees, staff, or programmers. The opinions expressed on this program are my own views or those of my guests. Thank you for listening to The Greatest Story Ever Told, WAIF, Cincinnati. All right, we've got a special guest list, part one, the early years, to share for you today. I'm uh, going to be bringing a lot of special guests playing with the Grateful Dead. Everybody from New Riders of Purple Sage, Elvin Bishop, uh, Ronnie Hawkins, Jack Cassidy, Carlos Santana, uh, Yomar Kokanen, uh, Santana's Rhythm Section, Dwayne and Greg Allman, Peter Green, Peter Grant, Janice Joplin, a couple names you might know there, Steve Winwood, Charles Lloyd, got some interesting stuff for you. I uh, just uh, dug into my proverbial vault of discs and uh, dug up a couple of scenes here that I didn't have, and I wanted to play a couple weird ones for you, as usual. Uh, I kind of specialize in the oddities and the rarities here on The Greatest Story Ever Told. Uh, got, uh, so you got a tune from 1966 to start things out with. Don't know where it was recorded, unknown location from the vault. It's called Mindbender. They only did it a couple times, uh, but this is one of the early tunes. I just figured out that the other day it would take me uh, at two hours a week, 108 years to play the bootlegs that I just have sitting around on my shelves, people. So I'm going to be bringing you a lot of different music for sure. So check this out. This is Mindbender from 1966. Bring out your days. They only did that song three times and retired it real quick. Like uh, this next song I'm going to play is uh, one of the guest list specials I was talking about earlier. We've got a song that did 1970, May 15th, from the Fillmore East. It was one of the uh, late shows, one of the uh, famous Bill Graham early late shows where they make uh, you know 
to make the Grateful Dead earn their bread. He made them play an early show and a late show. This one was from the uh, late show. Started out with an acoustic set. Joining them for this tune for the first time ever. They played it. Uh, it was I Hear a Voice of Colin with New Riders of the Purple Sage. So New Riders of the Purple Sage joining them. Uh, bringing out a new tune here that the boys did only a total of three times. Uh, this one is a little uh, gospel tune they did. I hear a voice calling. It must be our Lord. Must be, it must be our Lord. It's coming from heaven on high. I hear a voice calling. And we we mean nothing that we want for the land where we never shall. We're going to bring on the new writers of the Purple Sage. All right, the Grateful Dead Band for you. No more East Lake Show, 1970. Every week, innocent bystanders are senselessly killed with thousands of others injured annually here in the United States alone during police chases for nonviolent crimes. I'm Glenn Morshower. As a devout supporter of law enforcement, I'm here today because we have a problem. Police chases kill innocent bystanders every week. But Johnny Kallmeyer, who left behind a devastated family, including 13 brothers and sisters. Or Kristen Saragusa, a fun-loving mother of two. These deaths are no accident. Pursuit Safety does not want this to happen to your family. We're working for a safer Please visit PursuitSafety.org to learn the facts. All right, a little PSA there for you about Pursuit Safety. I'm Ramblin' Rob. You're listening to The Greatest Story Ever Told here on WAIF 88.3 FM. Got some great stuff here, uh, including things like this. Reggae music vibrating with the influences of Roots Daughters. Sister Tamar and Sister Kaya with Zion's Daughters and Roots Vibrations each and every Sunday afternoon from 2 to 4 p.m., Right here on WAIF 88.3, Cincinnati. You can also check them out worldwide if you have uh, any friends on the internet. And i got friends all over uh, in different continents, as a matter of fact, hopefully listening in. Uh, that's www.waif883.org. So thanks a lot for listening, folks. I'm glad uh, 
to do another show here. Got a little bit of extra time. Going to fill it in with more music. Always trying to stuff a proverbial three-hour show into a two-hour window. You can find Ramblin' Rob on Facebook. Just uh, look me up there. Type in Ramblin' Rob. I should pop up. We have underwriting spots available here at WIF. For as little as $8 a mention, you can get your event, your venue, your festival, your event you're promoting. Heck, even a yard sale. On the air here. And just contact Ram and Rob on Facebook or the station here, and we can set you up with everything you need to know. We have uh, memberships available still. Membership drive will be coming up here soon. Get in early, though, for $25. You can become a member here for 12 months at WAIF. We do have tax-deductible corporate memberships available for as little as $100. That's right. And uh, with both these, where Alan Rob will bring you a copy of the show and send it to you. And if you uh, join at the $100 level, I'll even throw in a free copy cup that has a random Rob's name on it. The greatest story ever told for you to drink and be the envy of your co-workers in office if you have a job. All right. That being said... If you are a local musician, speak of having a job, if you guys uh, are a local musician, think you're pretty good, just contact Randall Rob. He'd be more than happy to listen to your stuff and decide if you're airworthy. I can get you on the air up here in the studio. I've got some great guys coming up here in just the next couple weeks. Got Evan Ray making his uh, triumphant return to the greatest story ever told. He'll be popping in here in the next couple weeks. Also, Mike Conley, a local musician. Uh, both of them are going, going to try to twist their proverbial rubber arms and get them to play as much Grateful Dead as possible. But, uh, yeah, both of them are well-known for their dead stuff, so excited about that. So make sure you listen in. Also, uh, I'm going to quit rambling here. When I get back, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, news, what has happened in the jam band scene, and what happened today in Grateful Dead history. But here's another uh, rarity I pulled out. Um, boy, this one is rare. This one's called Cardboard, Cardboard Cowboy. Uh, a song that actually no one in the Grateful Dead takes credit for writing. Not sure about that, but I'll let you guys take a listen to figure out why. This one was recorded on July 29th, PNE Garden Auditorium, Vancouver, British Columbia. The first jaunt internationally for the guys. Uh, they went up there for a series of shows, had a real great time. Uh, and this is proof of it. This is Cardboard Cowboy from uh, the Grateful Dead. That's a lovely accent you have. New Jersey? Austria. Austria? <laughs> well, then, <laughs> good day, mate. <laughs> Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. Okay, we're going to do a song now. The title of the song is No Left Turn Unstound. That's an anagram, or is it a... Uh... Calliope. Uh, Splinterism. Splinterism. Uh, uh, certainly frivolous. A, uh, um, <laughs> a palindrome, that's it.
Season two amazed me. What cologne are you going to go with? London gentleman or wait? No, no, no. Hold on. Blackbeard's delight. No. She has a special cologne. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in nine countries. Yep. Yeah, it's made with bits of real panther. So you know it's good. It's quite pungent. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's a formidable scent. <laughs> Stings the nostrils. In a good way. Yeah. Brian, I'm going to be honest with you. That smells like pure gasoline. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Well, this job I got.
with the kill, but Elvin must have hit it quite well. Stepping in for Jerry Garcia there, June 6, 1969, beating on down the line. All right, we're going to play a quick little interview here. I was trying to give you guys a little quote or something about the Grateful Dead. This one is an interview with Jerry Garcia from 1976, a long time ago. I'm um, talking about uh, Robert Hunter and singable songs. Robert Hunter being, uh, we'll call him the chief lyricist of the Grateful Dead. And the first uh, lyric, the first thing that we did together, I think, was Dark Star, really, which was uh, our original concept of it was totally different than the way it eventually ended up, but that was the first thing that we did together. At that time, he was writing like crazed, crystal freak, mad imagery, you know, after having uh, analyzed each letter of the universe as to, I mean, the alphabet as to its, alpha, as its, its hypnotic content, and, you know, and all these crazed, you know, meth freak kinds of elaborations and you know he was into it uh, in other words you know into language and into writing and stuff like that so his his early his writings at that time were these amazing complex glyphs almost and uh i always liked his you know, his flow yeah they were they were real hard to make songs in fact the first two records that we wrote together were totally unwieldy i mean the songs were just they're just only a couple of them are, are remotely singable. Most of them are just too awkward. They're too wordy. And that was before we started to learn about the little niceties of songwriting, that you should leave room for people to breathe and stuff like that. <laughs> All right, a little tidbit there about Robert Hunter's writing style. He came up with a lot of the great stuff you hear by the Grateful Dead. Also, uh, did a lot of stuff solo. Check him out. He uh, also had a lot of solo stuff. Uh, you can find Rambler Rob on Facebook. You're listening to The Greatest Story Ever Told. Going to fill you guys in uh, with what happened today in Grateful Dead history in a little bit. Going to get on with one more tune for you first. This one is uh, the early years, like I said, guest list. And uh, we've got a couple uh, tunes left before I uh, get on with some more good stuff. But first, a good morning little schoolgirl to highlight uh Pigpen, of course, he uh, passed away last week, the anniversary of him passing away at the age of 27. This one is from 1969, June 13th, the Fresno Convention Center, Fresno, California. Special guest on this one, a man named Ronnie Hawkins. If you guys don't know about him, check him out online. You will definitely uh, hear him in this one. <laughs>
do his little thing by himself. So, yeah, Ronnie Hawkins there, pretty good heart player from the San Francisco music scene. All right, we're going to let you guys know what happened today in Grateful Dead history. In case you missed it, in 1967, the Grateful Dead were playing at the Whiskey A Go Go, San Francisco, California. 1973, Nassau Coliseum up at Uniondale, New York. That was Phil's 33rd birthday. That's right, we're going to get to that in a little bit here. 1990, Capitol Theater, Landover, Maryland. Last time they played Easy to Love You. And that was the last time they played the song called Revolution, done by the Beatles. Um, also, the Althea from that night was featured on an album that they released called Without a Net. Great little team there. 1993, Richfield Coliseum, Richfield, Ohio. That was an epic show. The first time they played I Fought the Law as an encore. That was what, uh, well, I guess most deadheads, me included, referred to as the Blizzard Show. Uh, I was up there with a bunch of my friends checking out a two-night stint in Richfield. But unfortunately, Mother Nature decided to dump 14 inches of snow around the Cleveland area in a 24-hour period. And wow, just kind of stopped that first show altogether. So canceled the first show, came out second night, started out playing, of course, a little cold rain and snow. They did a lot of good things that night. Like I said, uh, first time I played, they played I Fought the Law. You know, Stella Blue, Complete Terrapin Station was a good show. And I will say it was kind of mediocre playing, nothing real spectacular, but a really good set list nonetheless. Um, March 15th, hey, Phil Lesh's birthday. That's right, so big early birthday wishes to Phil Lesh, bass player extraordinaire from the Grateful Dead. Also, my daughter's birthday, March 15th. Happy birthday, Alexandra. I know you're probably not listening since you should be in school right now. All right. Also, uh, 319, hey, getting close to that date here, March 19th, Tom Constantin. He has a birthday coming up, so happy birthday wishes to him. And according to who you believe, the Internet or the family, <laughs> Owsley Stanley died two years ago on March 12th or March 13th. Not going to try to start any conspiracy theories on the date of his death there or anything, but uh, uh, we'll just call him sound man extraordinaire, manager extraordinaire, for the Grateful Dead, early sound man for the guy. Also provided a lot of the technical stuff as far as, you know, equipment goes and uh, setups responsible for the wall sound, i.e., you know, was a really uh, insane guy, mad alchemist, even madder chemist, uh, responsible for a lot of uh, the uh, good stuff that's happened in the 1960s, so check him out online, one of the more interesting cats in rock and roll, if not in the 20th century, kind of revolutionized, revolutionized the way people think and change things for everybody for the better. So check out Owsley Stanley on, online. You're sure to get a hoot from reading about him. Everything from his isolationism to his uh, wild religious beliefs to, you know, or not, uh, to UFOs, to his meat and milk diet. Uh, interesting to it. Anyway, we're going to get on with a little bit of music here by the Grateful Dead, playing with another special guest from 1969. This one from December 10th, the Thelma Theater in Los Angeles, California, stepping down to uh, Stephen Stills' area. So he stepped up and played a tune with them called Casey Jones. I'm sure you'll recognize it. So Stephen Stills joining the guys on a little tune called Casey Jones. Enjoy it. Hey, hey there, boy. Man, you got big. How long has it been? Three, four months? Ten years. Ten years? Man, I gotta lay off the peyote. And keep in mind, these recordings are almost 45 years old, so kind of get, uh, get a taste of what things sounded like way back then. Technology has you know, hurt music a bit. Woo! Woo! From the boys. Everybody who's ever seen a guy live, they uh, really care about the quality of music, so they take time to the team. And you're here, and you're just going to enjoy it. Okay, did join the boys. They did uh, trade some licks there in 1969. Did a little uh, trading singing lessons for some guitar playing. Jerry uh, played on a team you might be familiar with. A teacher Tilden, done by Crosby Stills and Nassau, Jerry Garcia playing on the, the pedal steel guitar there. 
Sorry. We did a couple licks on a couple albums for some singing lessons. Really helped the guys out when they came out with their two iconic albums. Uh, a, the American Beauty, and B, Working Man's Dead. You can really tell that they uh, were able to get really together as far as harmonies and uh, singing as a three-part uh, group instead of just one guy and another guy <gasps> singing back up. So. All right, well, I'm going to quit rambling here. Have a tough time. I'm not going to the guys, but we'll let the guys get on with a little Casey Jones here from 
Special Feast of James A. Stevens Stills joining the band in 1969. Just like to remind everybody that uh, Brandon Rob here at the Greatest Story Ever Told plays you the best in Grateful Dead local bands and jam bands. And speaking of uh, that, this is a labor of love. I play the tunes that kind of dance around my head all week, plus uh, some rare stuff that I think uh, no one else has heard. Uh, there are a lot of other stations out there. There are a couple other great shows out there, too, uh, as far as the Grateful Dead go. But I kind of do a little thing a little differently here, play some rare stuff for you and stuff that I normally don't hear on the radio. And that's what a lot of DJs do here. And if you listen to WAIF, as far as the music goes, you'll hear stuff that you don't hear on the radio, be it African drum, uh, Cajun music, blues, bluegrass, gospel. Uh, I call WAIF the Swiss Army Knife of Radio. They've got programming for everybody, and everybody does it because they love the music that much. I do this because I love the Grateful Dead, and I want everybody to hear this stuff. It's from rare and different tunes. And uh, and yeah, I've got about 800 complete concerts burned to CD that I'm just dying to share with everybody. So, yeah, like 100, like 108 years worth of stuff. Hopefully I'll never get to play all that. And if I do, hopefully someone will be helping me at age 100 and something. So, yeah, in addition to, you know, just the stuff I have laying around, there always is the Internet, archive, you name it. Uh, being the most recorded band in history, the Grateful Dead were never shy about letting whoever was there take their music with whatever they had. After all, when they got done playing it, they were done with it. They really didn't care what you guys did with it up until recently. All right. We're going to get on with the lyric of the day here in a little bit. Let you guys know about some openers that open for the Grateful Dead, the wide and varied Greek for sure, and some of the guest lists. That's right, the new section of the greatest story ever told called Guest List. I'm going to be highlighting guests that played with the Grateful Dead, trying to get one tune a week in. And this week is kind of the inaugural show, so I'm highlighting uh, pretty much the whole show with guests that stepped up and played with the Grateful Dead. So... Without much further ado, find Ramley Rob on Facebook. And you can also find WAIF 88.3 FM on Facebook. Like them. Like them both. And you can also contact Ramley Rob and talk to me about underwriting. Talk to me about how to become a member here. I've got some great little things for you if you become a member, including today's show, Burn the CD for you. So, we're going to get on down the road with uh, a little Dark Star Orchestra. Shifting gears just a little bit. Going to send this one out to my wife. I know she's tie dyeing today. So, I figured this one will make her a little happy. <laughs>
Scott Orchestra there for you, Saint of Circumstance, covering, of course, the Grateful Dead. All right, Ramblin' Rob here at The Greatest Story Ever Told. I always strive to bring you the rare and different things, stuff you've never heard, stuff you never even knew The Grateful Dead did. Some rare stuff indeed. Played a couple songs that they only did two or three times today. And uh, in my quest for weirdness and rarities, came across this one. You've heard Brewer and Shipley do this tune uh, on popular radio, top 40 radio all the time. Um, you know, it's really a popular thing. But I guess you've never heard this guy. Thank you very much. Now, here's an attractive couple. Well. Dale Farrell from Durant, Oklahoma. This. Dick Dale from Algona, Iowa. <clears throat> what well, let's, let's listen to Gail and Dale and one of the newer songs. This is a new song. Sweet Jesus, one talk over the line. Sitting downtown in a railway station, one talk over the line. Waiting for the train that goes home, sweet Mary, hoping that the train is on time. Sitting downtown in a railway station, one talk over the line. Ooh, I hope it's you. Been changing, as you can plainly see. I felt the joy and I learned about the pain that my mama said. If I should choose to make a part of me, would you really start me dead? And now I'm one joke over the line, sweet Jesus, one joke over the line. Sitting downtown in a railway station, one joke over the line. Waiting for the train that goes home, sweet Mary, hoping that the train is on time. Sitting downtown in a railway station, one talk over the line. One talk over the line, sweet Jesus, one talk over the line. Sitting downtown in a railway station, one talk over the line. Don't you know that we're waiting for the train that goes home, sweet Mary? Hoping that the train is on time. Sitting downtown in a railway station, one talk over the line. Don't you know that we're a sitting downtown in a railway station, one talk, one talk over the line. Proven in 1971, but he was a hip guy. That was Lawrence Welk there. Rare team there. One took over the line, a cover of Brewer and Shipley's classic there. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, I remember watching that show as a kid. We got America exposed to some great music, uh, and he was, a, he was a great guy. Great guy. All right, we're going to play a little bit more music here on The Greatest Story Ever Told. You're listening to WAIF 88.3 FM. You can find us worldwide, www.waif883.org. And Ramblin' Rob here has got a rare treat for you coming up, one of those things that only happens once. Uh, back in 1970, February 4th, that family dog at the Great Highway, a great little short-lived venue out in San Francisco, California. This was a, uh, a time when uh, like they were playing out uh, and uh, without a couple of the boys. I know uh, uh, this was a jam that they did, one of those rare things that, you know, like I said, they only do it once. You'll never hear this song again, never hear it played this way. But uh, Jerry Garcia, Yorma Tocone, Carlos Santana, Jack Cassidy, and Santana's rhythm section are playing on this one. So kind of a combination of Santana, the airplane, and the Grateful Dead doing uh, just a little jam. It's about a 10-minute jam. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a, uh, a little technical. You know, it, is, uh, it isn't the best quality, but you know, being 45 years old. And also, it is uh, kind of chaotic to listen to when you have that many people trying to play at one time in 1970. For $400, I got
down soundboard sure it did sure it did what are the levels set at the right amount down it's an old tape 45 years ago and there were a couple dropouts sure there were but that's what made this thing great it was still captured in its mostly entirety just a couple little cuts there and it was a monster jam there from 1970 Jerry Garcia Yorma Kokona Carlos Santana Jack Cassidy and Santana's rhythm section all playing together on that one uh, from a historical perspective, had to play that. My ears are still smoking. That was that was great. All right, we're going to get on down the road with a little more music here. But first, I'm going to read the lyric of the day. is from a tune called Estimated Profit by the Grateful Dead. And it goes a little something like this. My time coming any day. Don't worry about me now. Been so long I felt this way. I'm in no hurry now. Rainbows and down that highway where ocean breezes blow. My time coming. Voices sing. They tell me where to go. So that was from Estimated Prophet there. Bob Weir's little ode to a, I guess, crazy mystic rolling out to California. So we're going to, uh, speaking of Bob's craziness, we're going to have our little funny interlude here. We're going to uh, do a little comedy section here. This is Bob Weir himself from April 10th. 1978. Well, you see, while he's tuning up, he has to tune up between every song because he's weird about it. Um, What I'm going to do is I'm going to regale y'all with a story. And anyway, there was this guy, and he was a little guy, real real little bitty feller, and he wanted to get a job at a a lumber, at a logging camp. So he goes up to the boss at the logging camp and says, I'd like to apply for a job, please. And the, and, the, and the boss at the lumber camp says, well, you can't cut down trees. You're way too little and, and, and skinny and all that kind of stuff. You, you couldn't do that. And he says, oh, yes, I can. I'll prove it to you if you just give me a saw or an axe or something. And the guy says, well, okay, i got to see this. And they, they, he gives him an axe, and they go out back. And uh, 
and the guy just cuts down a million trees right there in, in like no time at all. And, uh, and the boss was standing there looking, and he couldn't believe it. He couldn't hardly believe it at all. And he said, well, I, 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 I guess you really can cut down trees, but where did you ever learn to cut down trees like that? And he said, well, did you ever hear of the Sahara Forest? Oh, they get worse, people. Oh, they get worse, people. You see, a friend of mine was out hunting in the woods one day. And, it, well, he was hunting for deer, but it wasn't deer season, so I guess you'd have to call that poaching. So he was out poaching for deer, and he saw a deer, and he took careful aim, and he fired and killed the poor thing. And, uh, and then he, he trots on over and grabs it and throws it over his shoulder and heads on out of the woods with it. And just as he was getting out of the woods over, over by the road where his pickup truck was, was parked, the, the game warden who had been waiting for him to come out because he saw his pickup truck and knew what was happening, Stops him and says, hey, buddy, I caught you. You're poaching. And the guy says, what? Well, how's that? He says, you're poaching, man, killing deer out of season. And he said, "What, my good man, what do you mean? And he said, well, you got a deer over your shoulder. And my friend said, what? I, I, get off. There you go, people. A little humor by Bob Weir. He tells the best jokes ever. And I won't... Uh, tell you about the yellow dog story. You can do a little research on your end about that. We're going to play a little bit more music here for you here on The Greatest Story Ever Told. You're listening to 88.3 FM, WAIF, Cincinnati Worldwide, www.waif883.org. You can find Ramblin' Rob on Facebook. I'll become your friend. Free of charge. No commitment. No down payment. I'll just become your friend for free. If you're a local musician, contact me because I'd love to hear your stuff. Got a couple local guys coming in in the next couple weeks. Like I said earlier, Evan Ray is making his triumphant return to the greatest story ever told. Also, Mike Conley, a new name. I've uh, been playing around for quite some time in Cincinnati. He's going to be making an appearance here. And I'm always excited to get new guys on the air, people that you might not know of. I'd like to expose you guys to the best little bit of musicians that I hear and see. Uh, and i got some local guys coming up here later in the program, some Runky Mountain boys. Uh, they are local, to say the least. I'll be back in town here soon on their uh, epic tour out west. So we're going to get on with a little more music when I get back from it. I will let you know who opened for the Grateful Dead, some weird names, to say the least, and some of the special guests that have shared the stage with them. But first, a little music here. This one is a Spanish jam. This is the last time that they played this. This was a... Uh, a tune that they did in 1970, February 11th, the Fillmore East.
in there. Last time with Dwayne and Greg Allman, Peter Green joining them, the boys, for a little number there. Hope you guys like that one. It was a treat to my ears. This next one is a real treat. Been waiting to play this one for a long time. Played this once last year. Going to play this one again. This is uh, Turn On Your Love Light. That's right. July 16th, before the ballroom, San Francisco. But joining the boys for this tune is Janis Joplin. You'll see why I love this tune here soon. And it isn't having Janis Joplin in it. Uh, Pigpen, you really get a highlight of Pigpen here as far as his improvising and his ability to get a crowd turned on and his link for Janice. <laughs> Thank you. 
1970. That was the last time Janis Joplin performed with the Grateful Dead. She passed away a short time later, but that was her last performance with the Dead. Fun little song there. I wish I had a video of that. It sounds like Pigpen and Janis were having a really good time, especially in the middle there. Don't know what nasty little pig was talking about there, but I think you guys are old enough to probably figure it out. So, that little 18-minute song, 18 minutes and 5 seconds, you know, you don't hear that on commercial radio. You don't hear that on, you know, say, Q102 or one of these other corporate radios. You only hear it on WAIF, and that's because people like you guys, my, my loyal and faithful listeners, are members. That's right. WAIF, FM Community Radio, is solely supported by memberships, underwriting, and grant contributions. Memberships can be obtained at any time by calling 749-1444. 961-8900. Membership is granted to anyone donating a minimum of $25 to the Real Stuff Child Radio of Cincinnati Incorporated. Membership includes voting rights at the annual membership meeting. And additional members receive our program guide and the WAIF alert. Nice little newsletter. Please make that call today, 749-1444 or 961-8900. Or the easiest way, contact Random Rob on Facebook or shoot him an email, randomrob883 at hotmail.com. He'll set you up with all you need to know. And if you do become a member, I'll give you a copy of today's show on disc. And at our $100 gold corporate level, I'll even throw in a coffee cup for you to drink out of so you can be the envy of the neighborhood when you're sitting out on your front porch in your couch in your bathroom in the morning drinking your coffee. You will... Point to your coffee cup with pride and say, hey, I listened to the greatest story ever told. All right. We're going to get on down the road with more musical guests. Hope you guys are enjoying our uh, greatest story ever told guest list. Part one, the early years. I'll try to come up with some more stuff there, but that worked. All right. So we're going to get on down the road with a little more music, a little more Grateful Dead, of course, and a little bit more of the guest list. And speaking of that, a lot of people have shared the stage with the Grateful Dead. A lot of people have opened for them. And here's just some of the bands that opened for the Grateful Dead. Uh, in 1970, a band called Bigfoot. Uh, of course, 1969, a couple times, Elvin Bishop opened up for the guys. You kind of heard him playing a little bit earlier on that great Beat It On Down the Line as part of the guest list. One date. April 7, 1995, they got a chance. The Black Crows opened up for the Grateful Dead. And this is kind of a weird one. Uh, May 24, 1970, Black Sabbath. They were at the uh, Newcastle On Time Festival. Uh, kind of a weird group. I can only remember a couple of them there, but a weird festival. I remember the Grateful Dead were there. Uh, I remember uh, Julio Iglesias was there and Black Sabbath. So those three bands right there kind of shows you that. It was kind of a different style of festival. Uh, 1982, Black Uhuru opened up for him. And in 1969, Four Dates, Blood, Sweat, and Tears opened up for the guys. And they do have a lot of guests that, like I said, have shared the stage. I'm going to pass that along to you now. We're having our special guest list show. So on um, 51070, the Allman Brothers played with the boys. Uh, also on the 14th of that month, 
the new Riders of the Purple Sage joined them. On the 15th, Fillmore show, of course, late show. On the East Coast of New York City, David Nelson on May 15th. And Gary Duncan and Dino Valenti on June 13th, 1970, joined them. Uh, I believe they were playing a good loving. I believe that was out at the only only uh, time they played in Hawaii. And I think they played there twice, actually. That was the first time they played in Hawaii at a place called Red Vest. And on July 14th, David Crosby, we're going to be hearing that tune a little bit later on in the program. And 716, Janice Joplin. That's right, you just heard that tune. From Janice, doing a little love light there, getting down and dirty with Pigpen. All right, well, that's just some of the guys who have shared the stage with the Grateful Dead. And I'm going to let you guys in on a little advice here. Listen up, my keen listeners. Why can't I grow azaleas now that I've made to Cincinnati? What is that bug? How do I prune my hydrangea bush? Now getting answers to your gardening questions is easy. Visit online at www.civicgardencenter.org. Or call the Civic Garden Center's gardening hotline at 513-221-TREE. That's 8733 for the illiterates. Volunteers, staff, the hotline desk from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. So there you go. If you guys need a question answered, they'd be more than happy to help you out. Find Ramblin' Rob on Facebook. He'd be more than happy to be your friend. We're having, uh, in a couple weeks, our all-Facebook request show. So I'm going to find out from my friends who's got the best uh, choices in Grateful Dead tunes, and I'll pick... I'm all out of the proverbial hat, probably not blindly, and uh, play some great music for you guys. I know i got a lot of friends who are deadheads, and they uh, always play some great stuff on Facebook, and I really appreciate that. I get a chance to listen to some stuff that I haven't listened to in quite some time, and a lot of stuff I haven't heard. Like I said, the Grateful Dead, being the most recorded band in history, do have quite the selection of music to choose from. All right, so we're going to get on down the road to June 27, 1969, Veterans Auditorium, Santa Rosa, California. This is a tune that the only Doc Watson song that the Grateful Dead do. This uh, Doc Watson passed away last year, late. And this is a tune that features a special guest, Peter Grant. He's going to be playing banjo on this song. And Jerry slides over to do a little pedal steel guitar. Uh, a song called Slewfoot that they did a couple times. Love the introduction on this one. Uh, and this is uh, just a really... Uh, Romp and song. This is Jake, the most acid I've ever seen anybody eat in my life. Bye-bye. 
Peter Grant on banjo. Love that Talk about some Americana. Every week, Alan Jones talks about the Peter Grant Band. Innocent bystanders are senselessly killed with thousands of others injured annually here in the United States alone during police chases for nonviolent crimes. I'm Glenn Morshower. As a devout supporter of law enforcement, I'm here today because we have a problem. Police chases kill innocent bystanders every week. But Johnny Kohlmeyer, who left behind a devastated family, including 13 brothers and sisters, or Kristen Saragusa, a fun-loving mother of two. These deaths are no accident. Pursuit Safety does not want this to happen to your family. We're working for a safer way. Please visit PursuitSafety.org to learn the facts. All right, that was a little PSA there. Hope you guys let everybody know about that one. Uh, I'm trying to wind down the last half hour by squeezing as much music in as possible, so I'm going to quit rambling and get on with a little music. Another appearance by Peter Grant on banjo. Joining him, John Dawson from New Riders of Purple Sage. A tune called Me and My Own. The very next day, on the one you just heard, it's like... And as always, it's a nice day out for the plane, trying to figure out what's going on with what. Like I said, this is a team that uh, they played a lot. This is even the most popular this song. This is John Dawson. The guy playing band for back there is uh, Peter Grant. Okay, this is the most popular team they played for this morning. They're yeah. good boys. They're good boys. And that grateful that they play with new riders. I'll uh, find to it around with them in 1969. Me and my uncle went right down South Colorado or West Texas down We stopped over in Santa Fe That's the point just found that way You know it was the hottest part of the day Well, I took the horse up to the store Went to the bar room for the drinks from home Three days in the saddle, you know my body hurt It's been summer, well, I took off my shirt West Texas cowboy, let's go around. We look at my name, let's throw it down. So soon as the fight day, you know it seems to shame. So you know my uncle, he starts spreading the game.
Cruz of California. Special guest John Dawson and Peter Grant there playing banjo. All right, we're going to get on with some more weirdness here. Like I say, I play the unique, the rare, the weird, the stuff I think you guys need to listen to. Everybody's heard Trekking and Sugar Magnolia on the radio. I'm playing stuff that's going to blow you away, like this next song here. 821, 1969, the Green Lake Aqua Theater. Seattle, Washington was the venue. And who else was in the crowd that they pulled up on stage but a little flute player named Charles Lloyd. Uh, and you're going to really enjoy this. This is a rarity indeed. He played a flute on Minglewood and China Cat that night. This one being China Cat Sunflower. Uh, this one is going to really make you smile. Have you ever seen a spoon that large? No, not, not since breakfast. Oh,
Luke Wout is extraordinaire. Charles Lloyd joining them on stage in 1969 up at Seattle, Washington. I'm going to try to squeeze in as much music as possible as usual. I do a lot of rambling, and then I squeeze a bunch of music at the end. So this is one of those efforts from my local uh, favorite trash brass fan uh, based band. Uh, these guys are really fan driven. They'll go anywhere to please fans. Uh, just getting back here in a couple of days from going out west by popular demand. And uh, they play all over the Midwest, a lot of festivals you'll see them at. They're called the Rumpke Mountain Boys, Cincinnati's Pride and Joy. Uh, HCEA is under their belt for best jam band and mostly best bluegrass band. And after playing this next number, from April 1st, I love live music, so I do live stuff. April 1st, Poston Lake Music Center, Hook in the Hills was the venue. I was there myself freezing to death. Uh, but I believe this was the uh, show they played that they actually had a rainbow, double rainbow, come out during their set. What a great way to end it. This is uh, the Bob Dylan Classic from the Felix Six. <laughs> That was the Rumpke Mountain Boys playing a little tune from Bob Dylan from a Buick 6. Going to squeeze a couple more tunes in here from the Gradesville Dead, of course, with some special guests. This one is a new Speedway Buggy 714, 1970 Euphoria Ballroom. Just a couple days before Janis Joplin joined them on that Turn on the Love Light. You guys just heard a little earlier, the 16th, that... Uh, date was Bears Going Away Party. And when I say going away party, I mean going away to the big house for doing a little bit of uh, mischievous chemistry, we could say. I believe the uh, L.A. Times said it best when they uh, published on the front page in big, bold print, LSD Millionaire Arrested. 
Owsley Stanley was that man's name. And uh, got a great little tune by one of the great little dead about that called Alice the Millionaire. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get on down the road with more music here. This one is a new Speedway buggy with David Crosby from Crosby, Stills, and Nash joining the guys. Still got the, uh, the old tagger on it, so you never even played it. See? You just bought it. Don't touch it. Oh, don't well, touch I, it. I wasn't, I wasn't no, touch no, it. No, no, don't touch it. I was it. just pointing at it. I well, don't point even. You don't even point. point. No, it can't be played. Never. I mean, I can I look at it? No. No, you've seen don't enough look of that one. <laughs> Yeah. 
Until next week, I uh, will talk to you guys soon. Come and contact me on Facebook. Be more than happy to be your friend. What'd you kids get? I got this cool pencil holder. <laughs> Far out, man. I haven't seen a bong in years. <laughs> <laughs>